here with Canadians Director of Amateur Scouting, Trevor Timmins, who just finished his 12th year running the table for the Canadians at the draft. Trevor, every year we do this interview, you tell me I'm going to have to wait five years to really find out how the team did. But I'm wondering, is this maybe a little bit different this year, just based on where we were picking, based on the fact that we had the 26th and then 87th pick, and last year by pick number 87, you'd already picked six different prospects. That was a more difficult year for the amateur scouting staff, knowing that our, our picks were later and we didn't have a second round pick. So the asset value of those picks uh, were less and uh, obviously it was, uh, it, it's, it's more difficult to project, you know, players that go later in the draft. Uh, Mark said after the draft when he had picked Nikita that Nikita Sherback was his 26th overall pick and that if he wasn't still available he would have traded down. You said after the draft that you were hoping to hit a home run with him. Are you looking at a, a kid that will eventually be an, an impact player here in Montreal? Well, we hope so. Um, we have projected Nikita to be a top two line forward. Now it's, it's up to us and for him to, uh, to achieve those goals. When you look at him, he was ranked 15th going in. Do you think that part of the reason he dropped was the Russian passport scaring off a couple of teams? Well, there's always that risk reward factor and a Russian player, even though he was playing here in, in North America, in the Western Hockey League for the Saskatoon Blades, there's always that re risk and teams. some teams don't want to take that risk into account. When you hear him speak, it's unbelievable that he didn't speak English a year ago when he came to Saskatoon. Do you factor that kind of thing in when you're interviewing a kid like that and you're looking for a character, just his ability to be a quick study and really try to learn English coming over to North America? It's really important for us to find out the character of, of the player, of the prospect, and we want to know everything about the player's background. That's why we do our homework, we do interviews, we do fitness testing, we check with players' coaches and trainers and find out as much as we can. We want good, strong people to move forward in, in this organization. The team moved up to pick up Brett Lernout at number 73. He's 6'4", 205. He's a man-sized teenager right now. Uh, he dominated a couple of the power tests at the Combine. It's not a huge surprise that he lists Chris Pronger as one of his hockey idols. Do you see a little bit of Pronger in him? Well, he's a big, strong physical defenseman. He's tough and he has a bomb of a shot. He's an extraordinary athlete. He just needs to continue to work on his game and, and evolve all aspects of it. But he's a shutdown type of D-man who's difficult to play against. A little bit of an off-the-board pick with, uh, with Nick Koberstein at uh, number 125 that he was actually ranked 205 coming in, so I think a lot of people were surprised. What was it about him, just another big defenseman to add to the system? Well, here's a guy who sort of flew under the radar all season, and we saw him actually by accident scouting another player in his league. We really liked what we saw, and we liked the upside with him because of his, his ability to engage the game. He wants the puck, he wants to make things happen. He likes to carry the puck up the ice, but he's also tough. He's another guy that had well over 170 minutes in families. Uh, dipping into the fifth round with Daniel Aldet, obviously someone whose bloodlines are familiar to Canadians fans. He led his team in scoring with the Sherbrooke Phoenix, not a great team in the queue, but he was 15th in the queue scoring race. So obviously he's not big, but he's effective. Does he remind you at all of another fifth round undersized player the Canadians have, Brendan Gallagher? Well, it's funny you say that because uh, I think he has the same birth date as Brendan Gallagher. Yep, he has the same height as Brendan Gallagher, and he was selected in the fifth round. So hopefully he can evolve into the same similar type of contribution that, that Brendan does with us. But there's no pressure on Daniel. You know, we'll give him time. What we like about Daniel is he's a skilled offensive player, but he does play hard. He, he plays with a lot of jam and grit and tenacity. and. He just needs time to continue to improve as an athlete and hopefully evolve into an NHL player someday. So he's got the same kind of compete level as Brendan, it sounds like, too. Similar, similar. <laughs> when you look at, I think a lot of fans were a bit surprised based on what the Canadians have in the system to see you select a, a goaltender in this draft with Hayden Hockey. What was it about him? Is he sort of a long-term project or long-term projection for you? Well, we have five years on Hayden before we have to sign him because he's going to go back and play in the USHL one more season and then he's off to Providence College where he could play up to four years. So it's an investment, it's like putting money in the bank. He was the USHL goaltender of the year and we like his upside. And just a, an antidote to him is that he's a cousin of Joel Quenbos. If you look over the 12 years you've been here, you've had some really big first round picks. Galchenyuk, Price, Pacioretty, McDonough. 
But you've also had some big sleeper picks in the end. You had Halak in the ninth round, Strait in the ninth round, Gallagher in the fifth. What, as a scouting staff, are you guys more proud of? Getting those first round picks right or finding those little draft day gems? Well, every pick we're trying to obtain a player that can play in the National Hockey League. And for us, the more players that we can get into the National Hockey League and play for the Montreal Canadiens, that's our goal, that's our job, that's what we get paid to do. So, I mean, you always have, you know, different players that, that make you proud. But anytime you can get a, a player in the late rounds, maybe we're lucky. And, but, I mean, we're, we're proud of those picks as well. Do you think you came away from Pit, uh, Philly with any of those late day diamonds in the rough, Trevor? Oh, it's too early to tell. We'll <laughs> tell you five, six years down the road. I had a feeling you would say that. Thanks for doing this and good luck to all the players who were drafted this year in Philadelphia. <laughs>